Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining me. Um, we're going to be talking about pickles today, and it is summertime here, and I think that everybody in the summertime should be making pickles. They are easy to make, so easy to make, and they can last many, many months in your fridge. And I can't tell you how much I love making pickles in the summertime. And then I make a bunch so that they last me through the winter um, because they stay perfectly preserved when you make these probiotic pickles. And a lot of people struggle to make crunchy pickles. So I want to talk to you about that today and help you. And pickles are such a huge part of my life. Um, I can't tell you how many times I use them to help somebody in need. If somebody feels some kind of bug or cold or flu coming on, I grab them a pickle or a spoonful of pickle juice and give them it to boost their immune system, and it works It works like magic. And if I need a snack, I will often grab a pickle, and it will quickly satisfy any cravings I have and help. Um, the electrolytes that are in the pickle juice are fantastic for, for giving you that adrenal lift in the afternoon. And they're so delicious, and they're so fun and easy to make. And fermented pickles bring so many benefits to your body with the help of those good microbes that are are in the brine and in the pickles themselves. So here are a few things that I want to talk to you about, about why pickles um, are so good for you. Number one, pickles help fight against viruses. Your immune system fights pathogens with bacteria and with helper T cells that are in your body. And they destroy foreign invaders, especially when you have a large number of good microbes. If you have a lot of good microbes in your gut, you're going to have more T helper cells that are going to attack those pathogenic viruses and bacteria that are meant to harm you. And the, the, the real key of this is that the more good bacteria you have, the better that's going to work. So they, um, you'll also get a lot of vitamin C from these, from pickles and from cultured vegetables, and they're going to boost that immune system of yours. And they do it so effectively that they make you stronger and stronger over time, um, making sickness a thing of the past. It's going to always help you fight any kind of pathogen that's trying to invade your body. And it's especially um, helpful too if you drink the juice. The, there's a lot of these special um, good bacteria in the juice that are going to strengthen your immune system. So it's, uh, it's, they're wonderful. I love pickles for that reason. Now, number two, pickles help with digestion. Now, there's a, so many beneficial microbes in pickles, and these are the probiotic kinds. Now, the kinds that you get at the store that are just canned on store shelves that are made with vinegar, those are not the type of pickles I'm talking about. I'm talking about the pickles that you either make or find in the refrigerator section at a health food store that say they contain um, live uh, bacteria or they have probiotics in them. And those are the pickles I'm talking about. Um, they were made this way. We made them this way for thousands of years. It wasn't until, you know, recently that they started making pickles with vinegars and so they would stay more uh, shelf-stable in stores. But you want these probiotic pickles because they help massively with so many of these things. And the big one is digestion. Because they not only do they have extra probiotics, but they have digestive enzymes in them. And this is going to help you absorb more nutrients when you eat it with a food. Let's say you have a pickle with your sandwich or something. It's going to help you to get more nutrients from the sandwich because the pickles are pre-digested. And they're going to help to break down that sandwich and allow you to get more nutrients from it. And they're going to load you with enzymes. And all around, all across the board, you're going to be able to digest your food easier. Um, you won't need as many supplements and vitamins because you'll be absorbing more live nutrients from your food which is going to help everything. Because the more nutrients you get from the food, um, the, the better your body and the cells of your body are able to handle the, the things in your life, be it, you know, sickness, disease. It's going to be something that is going to allow it to be very much strengthened. Number three, one of the things that these pickles can do is help to control candida. You know, all fermented foods play a really important role part in rebalancing your gut flora and helping you to recover from gut imbalances such as candida. They bring things back into balance very quickly 
And candida yeast cells don't get a chance to get out of balance and grow and flourish and take over a lot of places places in your gut that they're not supposed to do um, if you have a lot of probiotics in your diet and you have a lot of good bacteria in your gut. Then candida can't get a foothold. It has to stay over in the corner where it's supposed to be and the good bacteria will crowd it out. So that's one of the wonderful ways they do it is by keeping all the large numbers of good bacteria in your gut. And this allows the yeasts that are in your body, which we have good yeast too, to stay in its rightful place um, and not grow out of its boundaries and cause all kinds of, of other problems that candida can do when it gets to getting a foothold and spreading throughout the body and different places that it doesn't belong. Now, I should note that um, eating large amount of fermented foods is really more powerful than taking a probiotic, probiotic supplement. And what happens is because the food, the cultured food that has probiotics in it, has like a little protective halo around it as it speeds to the parts of the body it's needed, it doesn't get killed by the acids in the stomach, the stomach acids that are meant to kill like supplements. Um, or, you know, most of the time you take supplements, they land in your stomach where it's very acidic and then it kills bacteria. So they don't go to the parts of the body that are needed. But when it's in, when probiotics are in food, they have like this little halo around them that protects them, and allows them to speed to the parts of the body where it's needed. So they're much more effective. But when you consume a lot of fermented foods, you can get what they call a Herkama reaction, which, um, it, it starts to kill the harmful bacteria in your gut, it starts to kill candida, and it can give you what they call a die-off experience. Because when pathogens die off, they release toxins. And often, this can mimic a yeast infection because they start to die off in large numbers. And for instance, when you, candida dies off, it gives off 80 toxins. So it can kind of feel like you're getting worse before you get better. But remember that this is what they call a healing crisis or a Herkimer reaction. And um, it's very short-lived. Uh, but it, you may experience that if you have a lot of imbalances in your gut and you're eating a large amount of fermented foods. So go slowly and uh, maybe have like one pickle, see how you do. If you don't have any reactions, you can have as many as you want. But um, that may be something that uh, you need to remember. Okay, so this is number five, natural antioxidants. Natural antioxidants found in cucumbers help fight against free radicals. And free radicals are unstable chemicals that are formed naturally in the body, and that can lead to cell damage. While cooking food um, breaks down some of those heat-sensitive nutrients, cultured vegetables preserve their antioxidant power and also the vitamins and minerals and supply them through the magic of fermentation. So you're going to get more enzymes, you're going to get more vitamins and minerals, and um, then you would in cooked food, and, and you're going to get probiotics too. So that's another benefit to eating probiotic fermented pickles. Okay, so now you probably want to know how to make your pickles crunchy, because it's a little bit tricky sometimes, and I'm going to give you a few of the things that I've found that have made a huge difference. And I've been making these probiotic lacto-fermented pickles for years. There's been a lot of trial and errors, and um, I, I found ways to make them crunchy. And there's just a few things that make a big difference. And um, some of them, you're, you're going to need to experiment and see what's best for you. Pickles are worth the effort. They're worth the experimentation. Um, I knew I just made a new version of pickles, and I used pink peppercorns from my tree in my yard. And I love seeing them in the brine fermenting my pickles. They give it a lot of flavor. Um, there's a lot of different recipes I'm going to give you that's going to really make it fun for you to make your own pickles and to try different versions of them. So here are four things you can do to make your pickles crunchy. Mineral rich salt. Salt hardens the pectins in vegetables and this is what makes them crisp. Crisp. Without enough salt, any cultured vegetable and especially pickles will be soft and mushy. So if your cultured vegetables, even if you know, whether they're pickles or other kinds, are turning out mushy, that's because you're not adding enough salt. And I have found that pickles need more salt than the other cultured vegetables to keep them crisper. And it's really important to use a mineral-rich salt like Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt, ones that have minerals in them. And they can have up to 80 minerals in them that's going to really help your pickles to be crisp. 
They won't really taste as salty as regular refined salt without minerals because these these salts like Celtic sea salt and Himalayan, they, they have a more... I mean, I could use a lot more salt from them and it doesn't get super salty because there's so there's such a rich diversity of minerals and um, potassium and just so many different types. I mean, over 80 in Celtic sea salt alone that it doesn't seem to ever get too salty. So um, there's a product called Real Salt that has a lot of minerals in it, Himalayan, Celtic sea salt, and there's many others. But I encourage you to try and test that out for yourself. Um, and when you're making pickles, here's a, here's a rule of thumb with salt. You need to use two tablespoons per quart. You can add another tablespoon if they turn out to be not crisp enough. So your next batch, you should use more. Um, but these mineral rich salts are very different, you know, from salts that have been stripped of their minerals. And I actually found that using Celtic sea salt, which is full of magnesium, um, actually helps lower blood pressure in me and stay in a healthy range while using regular salt without that magnesium component in it um, would elevate my blood pressure. So that's a, a wonderful thing. Because of the magnesium minerals in Celtic sea salt, it actually worked the opposite to other salts. And that's why I mostly use Celtic sea salt in all my fermented cultured vegetables and, and other and salting my foods and, and cooking. I always use Celtic because of the magnesium and how much it helps me. You know, I, I really learned that it wasn't the salt that was causing the problem. It was the refining of the salt that was stripped of all those minerals that were naturally occurring in salt. So that's the problem. We change the way nature makes something, be it salt or other foods. Um, that's when our body gets into trouble because we really have changed the product itself. It's really been a journey for me to discover that, you know, we've demonized so many foods, but often it's not the food, it's what we've done to the food. So when I consume food in its natural state, they become health foods for me once again, and I find benefits on top of that. So salt will slow down fermentation a little bit, which can be kind of important in like hot climates. It's going to change the amount of time that you ferment something, and salt helps that. It'll slow it down a little bit, and um, I... I like the way that it makes it taste too. I like the way that it makes those pickles taste. It's really a flavor enhancer. That's what salt naturally is, and it is. Uh, it's it's a pretty it, it's a pretty exciting thing to be able to see these these pickles change into something completely. These cucumbers to change into pickles. Um, it's really it's really fun, and salt is a big part of that. Sondra Katz, um, who has written many books on fermentation, and actually he was one of the first people, um, I went to his uh, seminar so many years ago, almost 19 years ago, on fermenting foods, and he's written the wonderful book, Wild Fermentation. He has something to say about salt um, and pickles, and I wanted to tell you in his words what he says. And he says, the strength of the brine varies widely in different traditions and recipe books. Brine's strength is mostly an expression of the weight of salt as a percentage of the weight of solution, though sometimes as a weight of salt as a percentage of volume of solution. Since in most kitchens we are generally dealing with volumes rather than weights, the following guidelines may help readers gauge brine strengths. So basically, added to one quart of water should be a tablespoon of sea salt weighing about 0.6 ounces, adds 1.8% brine. So two tablespoons of salts in one quart of water yields a 3.6 brine, and three tablespoons of salt would add 5.4%, and so on. In the metric system, since 15 milliliters of salt weighs 17 grams, added to one liter of water yields 1.8% brine. Some old-time recipes call for brines with enough salt to float an egg, and this translates into about a 10% salt solution. This is enough salt to preserve, preserve pickles for quite a long time, but they are too salty to consume without a long desaltination soak in fresh water. So low-salt pickles around 3.5% brine are what they call half-sours in delicatessen lingo. And this recipe um, is for salt, sour, fairly salty pickles using about 5.4% brine. But, um, you know, experiment with your brine strength. A uh, general rule of th thumb is to consider in salting your ferments, more salt to slow down the microorganism actions in summer heat and less in the winter when you want your, my, 
less salt in the winter when microbial action slows. So it really kind of depends. My thing is two tablespoons per quart. That seems to work for me. But, you know, fermentation is a very individual thing because the temperature of your kitchen is different than mine. Um, your pickles may be different. Your cucumbers may be different than mine. So that is just kind of a general rule of thumb. Um, and if you want to read this, I have, I'm going to put the link in the description below so you can read what Sandra said again if you want to kind of digest that more and read it for yourself. So now the next thing that's really important about having crunchy pitch pickles is buying fresh pickling cucumbers. Um, you can buy regular cucumbers, but they don't work as well. You need to get the little pickling cucumbers. They work the best. And, um, you know, some of the cucumbers that are in stores are old and you don't even know it. So when you ferment them, they get soggy, they get mushy. And um, whole pickling cucumbers work the best for when I'm making pickles. pickles. But I learned that after many years. Um, it's more of a challenge to find, but in the summertime, they seem to be everywhere, you know, and they're just, they call them, sometimes they'll call them little cukes. Sometimes they're just pickling cucumbers. There's different names for them, but they work really, really well. Um, you can use cucumbers cut into spears or circles if you'd rather do it that way. But in my experience, the whole cucumber made for pickling works the best. Okay. Now here's something else you need to know. The enzymes in pickles. Sometimes there is an enzyme in the blossom end of a cucumber that can lead to softening and making for soft and mushy pickles, and you won't even know it's there. Um, it's especially true when cucumbers are picked fresh from the garden. That enzyme hasn't had, a t had time to kind of go away, and they, they, the enzymes start to be released as soon as the cucumbers are removed from their vines. And although I haven't really had this happen too many times, there have been people who have told me they did everything right, but they still had soft pickles. And most of them, in almost every case, was because they picked them straight from the garden. So um, some people recommend just trimming that little blossom end off the cucumber before you put it into jars or letting them sit for a couple of days on the counter till it goes away. Um, and another way to handle this is to refrigerate them, refrigerate them for a couple of hours before making them into pickles. And that will help that enzyme to go away. Chilling, chilling the pick, chilling the cucumber will slow the enzymatic spread throughout the cucumber. But I, I do think it's a better option than cutting the end off of the cucumber because I like to have them whole. Refrigeration allows the cucumber to weep or drain their juices and become a little bit softer. So don't let it sit in there for a long time. Okay, now the last one I want to tell you about is tannins. One of the big secrets to getting crunchy pickles is to add leaves, such as grape leaves, oak, oak leaves, raspberry, blackberry, cherry leaves. They all have tannins in them. And you're like, well, how do I know which leaves have tannins and how do I get a hold of them? Well, I have just picked some from my tree, but if you don't have any of these leaves, you don't have an oak tree in your yard, you don't have any blackberry or raspberry leaves, um, you can also use tea bags. And I have a recipe for Earl Grey, tea, tea, Earl Grey tea pickles that is yummy and has a unique and delightful flavor to your pickles. But you can also use black or green tea bags and because they have all these tannins in them. And actually tannins are what makes kombucha uh, bubbly and helps it to uh, ferment properly. You need the tannins in the tea. And there are some in tea leaves, so you can just add um, you know, a bag to your jar and let it ferment and it will help make those pickles crunchy. And it's kind of a fun thing. You can experiment with different flavors. Now, herbal tea bags won't work. They don't have tannins. It actually has to be tea um, because, you know, herbal teas are made out of herbs and they don't have the tannins that tea does, tea leaves do. So that's an important thing to know that you really need to use tea bags or tea leaves. So I have a bunch of recipes and I'm going to put the link in the description below, but let me tell you about some of them. I have cinnamon dill pickles, which is a delicious pickle recipe where it gives it just a hint of cinnamon, making a really yummy pickle that I absolutely love. I also have my own dill pickle recipe that I've used for many years, which I kind of um, made after some of my favorite. I love Bubby's pickles. If you've never had them, they're delicious. They too are probiotic pickles. And you can get them in most health food stores. And I kind of made my own recipe after that taste because I loved them so much. And I have that recipe and it's called Donna's Dill Pickle. I have the Earl Grey Tea Pickles where you can 
uh, use Earl Grey tea bags and put them in there, or you can use any kind of tea bag, and it makes a really yummy pickle. I have the pink peppercorn pickles, which I absolutely love. It has a lot of flavor. It's got a unique kick to it that I think you'd really enjoy. Um, I have pickle poppers, which you make after the pickles are done. You make them into little bite-sized snacks. People love those. I have rosemary sage pickles, which uses a sprig of of, uh, rosemary and a little bit of sage and makes a really yummy uh, pickle that I love to have um, make ahead of time and save for the winter because I love the flavor. I have a sweet pickle relish that's really good. And I also have a Christmas pickle, if you're interested, um, that is so yummy that I love to make at Christmas time. And all of those recipes will be in uh, the link description that I'm going to leave below that you can go check out all those recipes and read again maybe some of these um, some of these suggestions so you won't forget them all and you'll have them this, so you can take a look at them. So, but this is my encouragement to you. Make some pickles this summer. I think you'll really love them. Try them if you like them. Maybe make a couple jars so you can have them and save them for the fall. They last for many, many months in your fridge. I've had some last for eight months really good. I do it a lot. Um, and uh, now's the season and the time to get those pickling cucumbers. They're an abundance everywhere and they're so good for you. And I think you'll really love them. And they will add a lot of probiotics to your gut bacteria that's going to allow your body to function more efficiently and allow your immune system to help you thrive. And uh, what better way than to eat a pickle in the afternoon when you need a little pickup? There's a lot of Research suggesting that the juice is, um, they're giving it to a lot of athletes. The pickle brine juice, because it helps them uh, like an electrolyte does. It helps to replenish them and make them feel rejuvenated. And that has happened to me and my family too. So I hope this helps you. Um, If you need crunchy pickles, here's a few things you can do. And uh, send me your, uh, your success stories and let me know how you like them. Or if you have new recipes, I'm always looking for new recipes. I love people when they share it with me because it's fun for me to uh, find new ideas. So thanks for listening, guys, and we'll see you next Tuesday. And uh, hopefully you'll make some pickles and uh, keep me posted how you do. Thanks again for listening.